I would like to dedicate this video to a friend and teacher of mine, Cliff Stoll, who is currently in the hospital. Get well soon, Cliff. Let this be a get well video. For those of you who don't want to hear much explanation and just want to see the experiment, the experiment starts at 4 minutes. Silicon is the 14th element on the periodic table, and it is right below carbon. Like carbon, it has four valence electrons. What this means is it can bond to many other elements on the periodic table. It can act both as a cation and an anion in an ionic bond. It can also form many, many covalent bonds. And this has led many people to think that life, which as we know it is carbon-based, could also be silicon-based. However, in addition to it being able to maybe create life because of its ability to form long complex molecules, silicon has also been the cornerstone in the technological revolution and maybe will be responsible for creating artificial life. The key in its being part of the technological revolution is that it is a semiconductor. What this means is that it can be made to be a conductor and an insulator, but more importantly, it can be made to be two different kinds of conductor. If you mix in a small amount of a group 5 element, such as phosphorus, arsenic, and so on, with the silicon, then there is an extra electron because the group 5 element has 5 valence electrons, but silicon only has 4. This will turn it into a conductor. And this kind of conductor is known as an end conductor because electrons are negative, and so there is a negative charge carrier. Another way to make it a conductor is to dope the silicon with a group 3 element, such as boron, aluminum, and so on. What this does is that because boron or aluminum or any group 3 element has only three valence electrons, there's a hole where there aren't any electrons. This will also carry charge, just like an extra electron will. And this turns it into a p-conductor because the absence of electrons is a positive charge carrier. I'd love to talk about how the first transistor actually worked, but they used germanium for the first transistor, and there is precious little to say about germanium. So I'm going to save that for the germanium video. As always, I try to show you an actual sample of the element I'm talking about, and I managed to do that with all my videos except for the fluorine video. So here is some silicon. It's ground to a mirror finish. This is this silicon was going to be made into a, a chip wafer, but guess it wasn't pure enough, so it ended up on eBay where I happily purchased it. And so now I have it. I've got quite a bit more of these, but I don't have an, an entire wafer one. So this is the best um, I can show you. The silicon you saw earlier was single crystal silicon, this silicon. So this is a single crystal of silicon. But I also have this bottle, which has little pieces of silicon, which have many, many little tiny crystals in there. Um, just thought I'd show you all the different forms I have. I don't know if you remember, but in my third carbon video, I said that if you took methane, which has four hydrogens surrounding one carbon atom, and swapped the carbon for silicon, it became silane, which was pyrophoric. For the silicon video, I will actually make some of the silane, and I'll show it burning. Okay, so now I'm gonna make some silane gas also known as silane, and this is done, the way I'm going to do it is by mixing magnesium silicide in here. But by mixing magnesium silicide, which is this powder right here, with hydrochloric acid, which is in this beaker. What happens is that the magnesium will bond to the chloride ions, and the silicon bonds to form the hydrogens to make silane. Silane is just like methane, except instead of carbon in the middle, there is silicon in the middle. Now, when silicon's in the middle and silane, then its flash point goes to below room temperature. So 
the minute it comes in contact with atmospheric oxygen, it will spontaneously combust. So I'm going to put some in here, it's going to generate some, and then it's going to combust with the oxygen in the beaker. So let's watch this happen. Here it goes. with a larger chunk, and so I'm going to go outside the garage for that. Okay, so I've been dropping very small amounts of silane, of, uh, excuse me, of magnesium silicide into the hydrochloric acid, and it still made pretty good um, fire, but here's a huge chunk, and let's see what happens when I drop this into the hydrochloric acid. Whoa. 